All right, let's see if we can remember a few important concepts from your mechanics class. Let's say I have this wrench here, and let's say I apply a force right there. I'll call that force F, and in this discussion, we'll say that this force has magnitude 50 newtons. All right, so we have a wrench with 50 newton force on it, but when we have a wrench, we're really not there to put a force on it. What we want to do is we want to turn this bolt. So instead of thinking about the force all by itself, we think about the moment that it creates about the center of that bolt. So when we define this moment, what we do is we create this other vector right here that I call R. And for purposes of discussion, I'll say that R is 10 centimeters. And then you'll recall that we say the moment for this case is going to be the 50 newtons that times the 10 centimeters. And that's going to be a moment counterclockwise, right? Or you can work out the multiplication. It'd be 500 newton centimeters counterclockwise. And then there's another perhaps more formal way to define a moment. And that's to simply say the moment is a vector about some point P. I'm calling the center of the bolt point P, by the way. This is going to be the vector R, vector cross product with vector F, like so. And by definition, this vector cross product, what, that is, what does that mean? That means you take the magnitude of R, and you take the magnitude of F, and you multiply by the sine of the angle between those two vectors. What's the angle between those two vectors? To find the angle between those two vectors, you lay them tail to tail, as I have here. So there's R, and here's F. And and the angle between those two vectors is right there. Call that theta. And then unlike a dot product, remember dot product takes two vectors and turns it into a scalar. Cross products produce vectors. So I got a vector cross product with a vector. This is going to produce another vector. So far I just have a scalar here. So the result of this cross product is something that's in the E hats. I'm going to call it RHR for right hand rule. And of course the way this works, I hope you've seen this before, is you take your right hand. You don't see my right hand here because I'm can't put it into the screen. But I take my right hand and I point all my fingers in the direction of R. That's the first vector. And I try to roll my fingers, wrap my fingers around in the direction of F. And since my fingers are not double jointed, I can only roll them around one way. So the way I do it is in a way for which my thumb, if I stick my thumb out, the thumb will point out of the screen here. So that my thumb will point in the direction of the resulting cross product. And that's E hat right hand rule. So with this formulation, we get the same answer we had previously. That is, we take the magnitude of R, that we said that was 10 centimeters. The magnitude of F, that was 50 newtons. Multiplying those two together, take the sine of theta. In this case, I tried to draw these two things perpendicular to each other. So theta would be 90 degrees. Sine of 90 degrees is just one. And it's in the direction E hat right hand rule. So what we get is, is 500 newton centimeters. And if I call I hat and J hat these horizontal and vertical components as shown up here, then this cross product would be in the K hat direction. Let me see if I can squeeze in a K hat right there. So a vector pointing out of the screen would be a moment. If, if you take your right hand and point your thumb out of the screen and wrap your fingers around in the way that, in, that the fingers on your right hand normally go, then those fingers would sort of roll in this counterclockwise direction. So anything, any moment vector out of the screen means a counterclockwise moment. So we get the exact same thing that we had up here. So now let me try something a little different. Let, instead of having that force coming in at a perpendicular angle to R, let me have it coming in at a diff slightly different angle. So if I were to lay these two vectors, R and F, tail to tail as I did before, I would get something like this. And now notice this time my angle here is not 90 degrees. It's something less than 90 degrees. And by the way, this angle right here, and I'm calling it theta, that's the same as this angle right there, right? So if I look at my, my expression for vector cross product, what do I see? I see an R, a magnitude of R, which, which is the 10 centimeters again. And then I have F and sine theta. And what is the F sine theta? Well, one way to look at this, let me sort of sort of draw in a, a triangle right here. By the way, this angle is also theta. So if I look at this triangle right here, F is the hypotenuse of that triangle. F times sine theta would give me the length of the side opposite of this angle. So therefore, F sine theta is the magnitude of this side of the triangle, right? So what the cross product does is it pulls off the component of F that's perpendicular to R because that's the piece that's going to cause the moment. This tangential component of F, well, that's in the same direction of R. That's not going to contribute to the moment. That's just going to contribute to trying to pull this wrench off the bolt. It's the perpendicular component that creates the moment. 
and it comes out quite nicely in this vector cross product type formulation. Again, we would use the re the right hand rule to determine the direction here, and again it would be in the in the k hat direction if i and j are labeled as such. Now there's another way to think about this moment that's equally valid, so let me try to illustrate that one real quick. So another way of thinking about this cross product is to reverse the order of this r and the f inside this little scalar thing here. So let me pull out the f, let me move the magnitude of r over, and put f back up here. So all I've done here is reverse the order of the scalar multiplication. I have not reversed the order of the vector multiplication, only the scalar multiplication. So this magnitude of f here is still 50 newtons, put that there. Now what is the magnitude of r times sine theta, right? Magnitude of r is 10 centimeters. Remember theta is this angle right there. So magnitude r sine theta would be something like this. Let me draw right here. And I tried to make this line perpendicular to the f. I'm not sure how well I did. But nonetheless, r times sine of theta was, would give me the length of this side of that triangle right here. So what I have is a 10 centimeters sine theta right there. And this side of the triangle, what is that? That's the perpendicular distance f is away from point p, right? So in the previous formulation, we, th we thought of the cross product as the perpendicular component of the force times that distance, or we can think of it as the force times the perpendicular distance. Either way works perfectly fine. And again, this would be a vector in the k-hat direction. Yes, so there's a second way of thinking about this moment. Finally, to wrap up, let me give you a different case. Now let's say my force vector, my f, points this way. Now you can imagine I'm pushing upward on this wrench and a little bit to the right in this picture. In this case, we can use the vector cross product definition of, of moment again. And the biggest difference perhaps you'll notice is that now the moment tends to create a clockwise twisting action about point P, right? So this is a clockwise moment. Now if, as before, I lay these two vectors out, the R and the F end to end, or perhaps I should say tail to tail, then this is how they look, right? Here's the R, again, that's towards the left, and F is upward and a little bit to the right. The angle theta will be this angle right here. And if I do the right hand rule, if I take my fingers and my right hand and point them in the, in the R direction here, and wrap those fingers in a direction that goes to F in a way that works with my non-double jointed fingers, then the only way I can do it is in a way in which my thumb will point into the screen, right? And if this is I and the J, then this vector cross product will be in the minus K hat direction. Minus K hat direction into the screen indicates a clockwise moment, righty tighty in this case. Yeah, and there's your moment. And I hope you see when I define this moment, it's important I put the R first and the F second, right? Because for vector cross products, R cross F is not the same as F cross R. So don't get that mixed up. These two vectors point in exactly the opposite direction, right? R cross F is the one we use. It's the way in which right hand rule will, will tell us the correct uh, orientation of this moment. And there's our summary of, of moments.